Good morning and welcome to Wake Up Well. This morning we're talking about hair and how to have your healthiest, shiniest, most glowing hair ever. So I'm going to bring in my guest today. His name is Marco Pelusi. He's a globally recognized leading hair color authority, a renowned platform artist and educator, a salon owner, and a fashion forward celebrity hair colorist who's worked with celebrities like James Brolin, Carol Alt, Eva LaRue, and Carson Presley. And we went to high school together. So let's bring him in. Good morning, Marco. How are you? Hey, hey. Laura, I'm terrific. I'm so glad to be here with you. It's going to be so much fun. Oh my gosh, it's been decades, I think, since we've seen each other in person. Way too long, but neither of us have changed. I know, I know. we really haven't. We look the same since high school, right? Right. <laughs> well, you and I both ended up out in LA. We're you know, both doing sort of the Hollywood thing, me in the TV industry working for Access Hollywood and you opening your own salon and working with celebrities. Whenever you're in LA, I, I feel like everything touches celebrity in some sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And it's everyone has some kind of a connection to the entertainment industry. Yep. And it's it's fun. All right. So today we are talking about your healthiest hair ever. I'd love to know from an expert some things that I can be doing to take as the best care that I can of my hair. Well, first of all, I think it's fabulous that you are really focused on the health of your hair. I think it makes us feel good internally to know that we are selecting products that are healthful and that maintain the quality and the integrity of the hair. That's my mantra as a stylist and as a colorist is to always work to maintain the quality and the integrity of the hair and the condition of the hair. So it starts from, as you said, selecting good products, but also asking questions. And when you're at the salon or when you're with your stylist, selecting color services that are healthy for the hair. As a matter of fact, it might even be good to have a stylist who might even refuse to highlight your hair once in a while and say, no, let's, let's baby your hair and not over process the hair. Less is more when it comes to color. I believe in pretty and natural when it comes to my approach to hair services and especially hair coloring. And a lot of you out there, I'm sure, are coloring your hair. So if you're doing it at home right now, work to find a product that is low in ammonia because ammonia, we use to strip our floors. We don't need to put a lot of it on our heads. Try to look for products that are all natural. If, if you can find organic, that's terrific too. So let's talk about some things that are going to help keep your hair healthy. So how many times should you wash your hair during the week, shampoo and condition? You know, the dermatologist community will disagree with me because they really believe in truly exfoliating a scalp and really shampooing often. But for any woman with any length of hair, it really gets challenging to shampoo the hair daily because it can dry out the hair, especially those of you who have color and especially those of you who have bleach or lightener or are, blonde, are wearing blonde hair coloring. So I would say in general, a general rule of thumb is maybe a couple times a week or maybe every other day, give your hair a break. And then you guess what? You get to sleep on it overnight. I guarantee you, if you smooth your hair out, it'll probably look better in the morning with a little more of the oils don't shampoo it, don't rinse it, and just kind of touch it up. You'll be ready for your day. And then shampoo the next day. When I was going to like the Golden Globes and the Emmys, that's what the hairstylist used to always say. Don't wash your hair the night before or just because I want it to be dirty in the morning because dirty hair like looks better when you heat style it and curl it and put it up and all those things. That was one of those industry tricks. We all have dirty hair on the red carpet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because if it's so freshly cleaned, it's like it's too squeaky clean, it doesn't work. You need a little bit of little bit of something in the hair. The hair does produce its own natural sebum or its own natural oils. And we do want to either create some of that on our own or use products that have some kind of oil, not a heavy mineral oil, uh, because mineral oil can actually block color and can actually block the follicle. But some natural oils, Essential oils are nice for the hair or just natural hair oils if you can let it leave it alone for a day. Any kind of natural oils are good for the hair. Tell me about that, essential oils. So what type of essential oils would you put on your hair? 
there are different essential oils for different purposes. So when we're shampooing, I think, it, or if we have an issue, for example, with hair loss, or if we have, we want to stimulate our scalp circulation, there are essential oils that are built to stimulate the scalp. In my shampoo, I have a rosemary mint. So rosemary essential oil can actually stimulate the scalp circulation. So a little bit of product with some form of rosemary in it is a good idea to stimulate. Also, peppermint is really good. Have you ever just eaten a mint and you, it, all, your sinuses open up and it's so delightful? And that sort of same philosophy is true for the scalp and the hair. If you can use a product with a little bit of mint in it, it can mint or peppermint essential oil. It'll it'll open up and help open up the scalp a little bit. And then sometimes for the hair itself, or even just for us, just as a general, let's go off topic with essential oil. Lavender is such a beautiful essential oil. We can take a little bit of that and put it on our pillow or get a little bit of lavender and even essential oil and even rub it into the hair because lavender is cooling and soothing and calming. Can you take your shampoo and your conditioner if it doesn't have any essential oils? Can you take like the little bottles and just put a couple of drops in there as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? I would take a shampoo. I would recommend adding a little bit of rosemary oil or a little bit of peppermint oil. Not a lot. And if you're worried about how in the heck to do it, maybe you could take a little small amount of shampoo out and put a few drops of the oil and try it and see how it feels on your scalp. Yeah. Before putting in the whole bottle. Before yeah, putting it in the whole idea. bottle and kind yeah. of figure it out. You're not really harming yourself. I mean, if you really are worried about it, then you can call the manufacturer and say, hey, do you mind if I do this? It's always yeah. a good idea to read the manufacturer's instructions, but but we can- And also it. like diffusing it, like putting maybe like a little coconut oil or something, you know, cause that's what, pe that's what you're always told to do when, with essential oils is make sure you have a carrier oil so you can always put in there. I wanna try that actually. It yeah. And then, smell good. Yeah, and then in the conditioner too, cause I have lavender in my conditioner. You could take a couple drops of lavender and put it in there if anything, it'll smell really nice. Let's talk about pillows. You mentioned pillows. Ooh. What's the best pillow for your hair? Okay. I don't have a brand name in my head this morning, but if it comes to me later on, I will share it with you. But there are pillows that we can buy that are specific for not wrinkling the face and not tangling the hair. I believe it's a silk satin pillow. So what would the pillow do to your hair? Well, because of the fact that it's softer and you're dealing with satin or silk and not a not a harsh surface, you're actually going to get less tangles in the hair. And any woman that has any length of hair or any curl or any wave knows that it's just whatever we can do to prevent tangling, especially during the night, because then we're going to have to work the tangles out. But if you do get up in the morning and you have tangles, take a little bit of leave-in conditioner and just put a little dot of the leave-in on the tangle before you comb through it. That's just another little tip. A little tip is that you can- So just that, rem that reminds me of like the bonnets. Like, you, <laughs> you know, like you, the women used to wear the bonnets in like the 40s and 50s. So we should return to the bonnet. Is that what you're saying? A, a loose fitting bonnet. Yes, a, a, <laughs> a, totally. I mean, why not? You know, a tight fitting one would be tough because it would kind of like, you know, maybe like, prevent the follicles from being able to breathe. But uh, I see nothing wrong with a loose fitting bonnet overnight. I mean, whatever works. And then on the other nights, if you're, if it's okay with you, or if there's a partner with you in your bed, you may want to take a night and put a towel on your pillow and take a shower, rinse your hair, and then really, really, really towel blot it really, really well to remove all the moisture and put a little bit of conditioner in your hair and maybe try sleeping with conditioner. See if that makes your hair, hair feel better maybe once a week. I mean, obviously- Oh, I like that. I wanna try that. I'm gonna do yeah. that. Not tonight, cause I just did my hair. So, but I wanna try that. That's a great idea yeah. to, uh, to sleep with the conditioner in it. And I wonder if that would make you wake up with like good curls too, after you got it out. It just, it just feels so good because it's so hard sometimes to squeeze in if you've got kids and you're homeschooling or working. <laughs> It's hard to fit in those 30 minutes of a deep conditioning treatment, which I would recommend at least once a week. In the fall, you get dry hair. And in the summer, you get like humidity hair where it's all in like, so are there different ways to care for your hair during different seasons? Yeah, that is such a good question. And as far as the fall and the winter goes, is that we start to get into those crisp temperatures 
And like you said, it starts to be low humidity. And then often as we move into the winter, or even the late fall, we may even turn on the heat indoors, which increases the dryness for the hair. So do those deep conditioning treatments once a week, shampoo the hair, rinse the hair, towel blot, get rid of a lot of moisture, a little bit of deep conditioner. You can wrap your head in a hot, damp towel, walk around the house. You want a little bit of heat like that with that hot towel. Or you can sit outside, obviously not in direct sunlight if it's warm enough. Or if you want, you can even take your blow dryer and just warm you up a little bit during that. Rinse it out, 30 minutes. That's something to do during that time. And what we're doing with that is kind of providing a barrier during the colder months. Now, the opposite is true for those of us, especially living in humid climates during the summer. So during the summer, it's going to sound like Florida humid. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So I've got a surprise and that is find a spray, a healthy hairspray. I'm not talking to go out and get one of those cheap aerosol sprays that provides buildup. You need, this is where I said earlier, and you even started the show by saying select really good hair care products, spray a nice hairspray. That's not going to build up in the hair to provide a barrier for your hair during the summer from humidity. So if you even just a light mist of a hairspray that's relatively healthy for the hair, most hairsprays have alcohol because it's a delivery agent. You got to get it on the hair somehow. So alcohol isn't horrible in a hairspray, but we just want to stay away from those strong aerosols that a lot of them even get white particles in the hair, but a nice, healthy, low hold hairspray during the summer That'll help block the humidity. I'm going to definitely go out and get that because obviously that's a problem. And, you know, it's perpetual summer here, so it's not as humid, but still, I mean, we get humidity into at least December here. So our summer is ongoing. So that's a really good tip because I definitely get like my hair gets all fly away. So and I know a lot of people who watch my show are in South Florida. So there you go. Go out and get some uh, hairspray. Let's talk about one of the things that you mentioned that is food. So your diet also affects your hair. So talk to me a, a little bit about that and what sort of foods can help give you that nice, clean, glowing, healthy hair. You know, it's interesting talking diet and the hair, Laura, because some of it just goes back to basics in terms of we need to find out what foods work with us. Some people are sensitive to certain foods. So even just paying attention to that, whatever's going to digest easily, rule number one, never hurts to talk to the doctor and it never hurts to talk to a nutritionist about this stuff. But other than that, there are specific foods and specific ingredients in the foods, minerals and vitamins that we can look out for for hair. And the number one vitamin or mineral that's already found in your multivitamin, so you may even want to just start with a multivitamin, is biotin. So B-I-O-T-I-N. Biotin actually can be taken internally. I always say check with your doctor first. Look on your multivitamin. It may be in there, but I know a lot of women that swear by it for many years, and biotin is known to possibly help prevent hair loss. So biotin you can take internally or you can eat eggs. Biotin is found in eggs, and I believe it's mostly in the egg yolk. I know it's not too exciting or sexy to be eating egg yolks because of cholesterol, but now the medical community is saying that a few egg yolks a week is actually okay if you don't overdo it. We also can look for the omegas, eating your salmon, walnuts. What the omega does that's similar to the oil on the hair is that it provides a nice shine to the hair. Also spinach. I think spinach has some omegas in it. Do you think that certain foods also dry out your hair that you eat? Can they be, can there be foods, you know, it's eating too much processed food going to dry out your hair or dry out your scalp or your skin? Cause you know, a lot of people get like dandruff and stuff like that as well. I think absolutely that is possible. And I also think that whatever we're eating that blocks circulation, I think that circulation is the key for the hair. So you mentioned like getting certain scalp issues and, and items, issues like that. And remember I mentioned about how rosemary stimulates the scalp. We always want to have, because the hair is an outgrowth of our scalp. So we want to keep those follicles moving. So even doing a really, just even a nice scalp circulation massage on your own head when you're shampooing. That's one of the 
the things that, that we love, like when we go to the salon is that they're like, they do that, that scalpy massage. I love that. So we should be doing that on ourselves when they're in the shower. Cause I think I probably shampoo my hair for like 2.2 seconds, but should you be spending that extra time doing that sort of same massage that you get when you go to the salon? I, I can't even stress it enough. It's just like getting a body massage. You know how like a certain part of your body uh, might hurt a little bit. It's like, oh, I need to get a massage because my neck hurts. And then when you get it rubbed out at a, at a massage, it feels so much better. The same is true for the hair. We want to keep that circulation going. And I'll give you a couple of moves right now that you can do on your own. So don't, right. don't yank the hair. Don't over manipulate it. We want to be okay. gentle always, but crack the apple. So you're going to take your hands and just go back and forth all okay. the way around through the hair like your like your opposite hand motions throughout. rather than like ah, like that yeah it's like this like, yeah because that's probably what i'm doing but okay so more okay. of this we're all guilty of it yeah back and okay. you'll notice you're you're kind of like taking the scalp in opposite directions mm. and another thing that's really important because of the fact that this area is so important to all of us it's the area that in the front where we get more gray we lose more hair take and really really massage around the temples take a few minutes and you can even do your thumbs sometimes the thumbs so that you're getting that circulation going there too would that help with like i mean after i had my son i had like my temples all that hair around there went away so would that help with like if you just had a baby you're pregnant to kind of stimulate that area too i cannot stress it enough cannot okay. stress it enough so in general around the crack the apple this way but then take a few minutes and just you know why not stand there in the shower and it only takes 30 seconds do a couple of deep breaths and yeah. massage around the front you might even feel better yeah well that leads into my next question about stress and how stress affects obviously everything you know your skin your body your bones but i would assume also your hair i think that's why people do tend to go bald i know that um, after my dad and my brother passed away, I lost so much of my hair because I was so stressed out and just in such a bad place that, I mean, I would say at least probably 20% of my hair fell out during that time. So what can we do other than not being stressed, but sometimes it's not possible, what can you do to kind of combat that sort of stressors on your hair? The calmer and the more centered we can be, I think the healthier we are and the better our blood circulates. So meditation, I think some deep breathing is really, really good for stress. And I think that in turn allows us to circulate better and then have better hair. Because when we're stressed, we're just, all of our blood is going to different parts of our body. We're in that fight or flight response. So anything we can do to, to combat that and to tap into our our quiet or nervous system by doing some deep breathing that'll keep us calmer and get better circulation and then even though it might be the last thing on our list during those stressful times those are the times to eat really well as opposed to going to junk food and sugar those are the times to really eat a lot of protein because it'll give your body some fuel to survive the stressful times yeah all of this stuff is very intuitive too like you kind of know what you need to do and of course i teach meditation so i'm a huge proponent of meditation and when my stress level to that note did come down that's when my hair started to um, grow back and you know not fall out it's definitely thinner than it was um because i'm getting older too so your hair does tend to thin out when you get older take a look at uh your thyroid i'm going to go ahead and make a mention for all of you who are listening to ask your doc for a full complete thyroid panel because many of us for years and years are running around exhausted and our hair is falling out or it's dry and it might just be a simple fix as restoring that thyroid function because thyroid even though it's a it's the easiest thing in the world to fix because you just take a little thyroid pill but it can lead to poor circulation poor metabolism and all that affects the hair so just a little shout out for that's good advice for to, to one of those things to check, especially if you ha are having that hair loss issue. So that's good. Thank you. And I will always tell people to get into their meditation and calm and center themselves. And, you know, it's just it's so important for everything. And, you know, your 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 hair is attached to your body. Right. So it makes sense that you should treat your hair the same way that you would treat your body this you know putting healthy food in yourself meditating trying to keep your stress level down all of those things affect the things that are attached to you right as well as in you and also 
they, they're not just attached on top, right? It all comes from inside your scalp. So it's growing outward. So obviously, you know, what you're putting into your body affects your hair as well, right? Oh, absolutely. Because you kind of approach it from two ways. Uh, number one is we talked all about how to put healthful products on the hair and to keep the hair healthy. But the hair outside our scalp is dead. So we, all we can really do with that hair, which is outside, which is what we see, is to treat it well with good products and not to overcolor it. But as you just said, every, it's coming from inside. The hair grows through a follicle from your scalp. So everything you do inside, that's going to lead to how the hair looks on the outside. Well, that just talks about life, right? What 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 manifests from the inside is what you'll see on the outside, right? So you want to start from the inside. Now, last question about keeping your hair healthy. How often should you get your hair cut in order to get rid of, you know, because as you said, this is basically, you know, dead cells, <laughs> the hair on the outside. So how often should you get, get it cut? I say maybe once a quarter for mid-length to longer hair and then focus your energy on your other hair visits to the coloring if you need to color your hair and find ways to color your hair that aren't overly damaging to the hair. Yeah, what's your suggestion on that of what type of products to be using when you are coloring your hair, especially, you know, because you don't want to put all these toxins into your body? I, I've got to say, I right now, I, we, I've spent my whole life putting together products. I worked in-house at hair color companies and in the last 10 years, I have been creating my own line of hair care. It's called Marco Collagen Color Guard Hair Care. And it's available on marcopelusi.com. We're doing free shipping until the end of September. Every single product in the system has a form of collagen in the product. And the collagen goes in and fills in those little holes when you're coloring the hair. We talked about frizzy hair. You want to go in and fill in the holes to create a nice, smooth surface. It's temporary. It's cosmetic. But if you use the products often, you'll eventually get that beautiful, shiny outer layer of the hair. And the color that you want to shine through will come. And I'm excited because you really don't see a lot of products with collagen in them. And yeah. we are offering free shipping. So. All right. We got it. Use code free ship. If you uh, you want to try the products for your hair, it's shampoo and conditioner, correct? Absolutely. And also, you can also reapply a little bit of leave-in conditioner. I, I do have a miraculous leave-in conditioner, so check it out. MarcoPelusi.com if you're interested in learning about products. And, of course, if you happen to be in L.A., you can visit Marco's salon. It's on Robertson, correct? That's correct. I'm on Robertson just north of Melrose. We Thanks. love our location. 15 years. I don't know if any of you watch Vanderpump Rules. We're just up the street from Lisa Vanderpump's restaurants. Actually, we're surrounded by Lisa Vanderpump. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Marco, for being my guest, for uh, us connecting after high school. And uh, here's to not aging, right? <laughs> Laura, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right, guys. And don't forget, we are here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. on Wake Up Well, and I will see you next week.